Welcome to News 3 at 10. The trial of Alec Murdoch Endgame. It may be the biggest surprise of all that we're here with you at 10 o'clock on a Thursday, just a few hours after the jury got this call and got the decision, got their chance to go ahead and say something about Alec Murdoch, and they did. In just about three hours, they stepped up and made that decision and decided Alec Murdoch's fate. Listen for yourself. I understand that there is a verdict. You may bring the jury. The defendant will rise. Madam Clerk, you may publish the verdict. Guilty verdict. Signed by the four lady, 3223. Guilty on all four counts, the two weapons charges, the two murder charges as well. Alec Murdoch stone faced as he faced these charges. No real emotion, more emotion from his lawyers than actually from him. And behind him, his own family, his sister Lynn, his son Buster in somewhat tears, but holding a lot of it together as they listen to the verdict and potentially watch as Alec Murdoch could take his last steps ever as a free man. We are here in Walterboro and I've got experts from the legal side for me. Sean Kent has been with me all day talking about this and really giving me great insight. And we brought in Justin Bamberg as well. Justin, since you're new to this, first reaction when you heard the jury is back with a verdict. I was surprised at how quick I mean, that, I, I personally expected them to deliberate tonight, have dinner on the government, take a break, come back tomorrow, and reach a verdict by late afternoon. Uh, so when I hear verdict, instantly I say, oh, he's guilty. Allie going to prison. No and, if, or buts about it. It was way too fast. Yeah, that's exactly what you said, too. When it came down quickly, you said, if it's a quick verdict, that's going to be bad for Alec. Period. Um, criminal justice system, 20 something years of doing this. Everybody, Everybody knows, knows, especially in the case of this magnitude, quick verdicts mean guilty. Um, there was no two ways about it. When we saw people running out of here, we knew what was gonna happen. Yeah. And, and I would just air any pundit out there who's telling you they expected that jury to come back tonight is just lying to you or doesn't understand the system. Nobody expected that. I expected maybe tomorrow, two, three o'clock. Um, I thought there was a small chance of a hung jury. I didn't think there was any chance of a not guilty, but I was shocked. Was it the, the makeup of the jury? Was it what that said three hours? I mean, we sat here for 26 days of testimony and they asked for a monitor, listen to some video, watch some video, and they were done in three hours. When, when I'm, I'm watching the jury, the jury so, so most of the time I was in trial, trial. I, I know facts, I'm watching the jury. I wanna see how they react. I wanna see what they like, what they don't like. And what I saw out of the jury were, there were early on some people whose minds were made up. Oh, he guilty. You know, at one point uh, when Alec took the stand, a juror literally turned their back to him, right? So there were some people whose minds I think were made up. And I, and I think when the defense case got presented, they, they needed a smoking gun to change their mind. And when they didn't get it, that was done deal for them, you know? The juror who got excused, mm -hmm. a piece of me was like, mm. yes. Now, obviously, I don't, sure. I don't care for Alec. Right. You know, I represent majority of his financial victims. I think he's a scum of the earth. Um, but that particular juror had me kind of worried a little bit. Could she hang it? Interesting, Interesting that, that she was, was the one that was taken away and said she believed that Alec was going to be innocent as well. And we thought that was going to be a precursor for potentially hung jury or more that were already on his side. Because watching the testimony today, especially, those jurors were intently listening to Jim Griffin. You talked to me before. You said that doesn't necessarily mean anything. They want to get everything they can before they go in that room. 100%. Um, the only way that jury would have come back quicker is if Justin was on the trial jury because he would have made sure it was just a little bit quicker. Um, 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah tops. <laughs> They're listening, but I'm with Justin. The defense was flat. Mm -hmm. You know, there was nothing to excite that jury about. And if you think about it, they wanted to monitor for one reason. They watched that kennel video and they said, I told you. And somebody in that jury said, I told you. Yeah. And they looked around and they all said, yep, you're right. And that's it. Which is why I've always said, Justin, they didn't need all those financial crimes. <laughs> they, they just didn't need them. It was a simple case. If you are at a crime scene and it's a murder and you find yourself lying, there's only one reason people lie at a crime scene at a murder. You had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. 
And so you've been dealing with the lying for a long time for every one of your cases out there. Kennel video was the key or was it that statement of lying? I, it was Alex's explanation of the lie. I think that that was the absolute nail in the coffin because, you know, if I'm on the jury, I, I've heard the, the 911 call, the explanation he gave of time. I heard the interview where Danny Henderson reaches and touches him on the back. Interview after interview after interview. And these are with a, with a lawyer present. It's, I wasn't there, I was gone an hour and a half. I think I saw maybe 45 minutes before that. And then the jury sees kennel video and it's like, bro, he was there. You have to have an explanation for that because again, like Sean just said, you're not gonna lie if you were innocent. And, and if your defense is, I love them, I care so much, I, I, I wanna find the killers. And all of a sudden, you're there. <laughs> yeah. These, these people are, are smart. And I think they're way smarter than Alec gave them credit for. He thought he was smarter than everybody in that room, including those 12 jurors. Surprised to see no, from either of you guys, surprised to see no emotion at all from that family with everything going on. No. Um, and, I'm, and my reason is going to be different than Justin's. Um, good, good defense lawyers prepare their client. You know what I mean? Like they, that conversation would have been had with Alec and that family all the time. Um, hey, if this could go the wrong, and this case is not one, I guarantee you Jim and Dick were sitting around and saying, we're going to win this and walk out of court. So he had them prepared. But when that verdict came back, I guarantee you what we didn't see was a call to the family. This isn't going to be good. Don't show any emotions. The pat on Alex's back, don't show any emotion. We got an appeal coming. I've said it a million times. That's the conversation. So he was prepared not to show up. Yeah. I, I was focused on Alex. Mm -hmm. And when the verdict's being read, Alex just cold, stone-faced, right? The tears. Let's go back to the, to the I found the body, right. right? No tears, just red face. I viewed it as pretending to cry. Mm -hmm. Now you get to court. There, there are tears, real tears. There's snot coming down to the point a juror hands you tissue, yeah. right? But he's only emotional when there's a potential benefit for him. At verdict time, there's no benefit to you having emotion. So he doesn't pretend to have any. He's stone faced. He knew. Alec has tried enough cases. He knew what time it was. And he knew they were going to find him guilty. And he knew that chickens came home to roost. Well, and that proved proof for us in the fact of not once during a financial testimony did he shed a tear, mm -hmm. show any emotion, and he never apologized to any of the victims, including yours. Correct. He, he said, said, I, I care, care about them. them. I love people. But his words have never matched his actions, right? And this is not just now. It's not just my words of, I wasn't there. My words of, uh, oh, I, I went to my mom's house because I care about my mom or my clients for, for 20 years. His words did not match his actions, and the jury saw right through his words, and they hammered him with the guilty verdict in record time. Did the money play into it? This is a working class jury in, <laughs> I, this man's turning this, his head already. This is where did we the money so play into it? Right? We'll start it, then started. we got started. But did the money play into it? This is a working class jury. I looked at those jurors in the eye. This was not a rich person's jury out here. You're in Colleton County. This is people who work for a living and heard about seven figure se settlements out here. To answer your specific question, yes. There's no, you can't avoid that. And this is where I think the defense made a mistake. Um, Jess and I talked about this. I, they underestimated this jury. I mean, we both are from small towns, small country towns. Um, these juries are smarter than everybody on that defense team and the prosecution team thought about it. They know more about this. They know about the money and they know where the bodies are buried. And you got a name for your property. It tends to make people all, uh, make people mad. You don't have an address, <laughs> but you have a name that makes people mad. And this is why I'm upset that the financial crimes came in because I don't think it was necessary. Right. Um, jurors don't like that. They're like, you stole money from the most vulnerable people on the planet. Yeah. Um, and as an attorney, and not a defense attorney, but as an attorney, I do civil work, but as an attorney, that makes me mad. And so that's why, candidly, I was upset when Dick Harputlian in his opening statement said, it's an honor to represent Alec. It's not. Right. There's not a lawyer on the... Sure. I, as a criminal defense lawyer, I feel different. Mm -hmm. But as a lawyer who practices law in South Carolina on behalf of all 
South Carolina lawyers. It ain't an honor to represent Alec Murdoch. <laughs> I, I would give you last word. We have to go to break first, Justin. So we've got some severe weather situations going on as well that Chris wants to talk to you about for the next week. We're going to be back right after she does the weather and this quick break with a lot more from both Sean Kent and Justin Bamberg about Alec Murdoch's guilty verdict today. What does it mean now? What does it mean in the future? Now, WSAV News 3 on your side weather with Storm Team 3 Viper Radar, powered by the Dozier Law Firm. Well, weather-wise, for the most part, our Thursday afternoon was very warm. It got pretty cloudy, and we even actually had enough moisture to contend with where uh, this evening on Viper Radar, we were tracking some light showers across the area, and that's what we are doing right now. Mostly very light, and if you're one of the luckier spots, you'll see a couple of raindrops this evening, but for the most part, our higher rain chance will hold off until tomorrow. This is basically just enough rain to make surfaces just a little bit wet and nothing that will help to wash your car off whatsoever. But things will really be changing through the day tomorrow. The winds are going to be on the stronger side and we do have the potential for a few strong to severe thunderstorms as we head into Friday evening. But right now wind speeds are fairly light compared to where we are heading. Those winds are going to be picking up through the day tomorrow. So even without severe storms, the winds are going to be uh, uh, noticeably high for tomorrow, gusting up to about 35 miles per hour. But these are the sustained wind forecasts from Viper casts up to about 20 to 25 miles per hour for us at times. So as a result of these winds staying pretty strong throughout the day, we do have a wind advisory in place throughout the day tomorrow until 8 o'clock, really until the next frontal boundary is able to work its way in. So tomorrow is a weather aware day because of the strong wind and also for the potential for a few strong to severe storms rolling through the area. As far as the setup across the southeast, we do have a frontal boundary that's just to our north. That's helping to direct in 
some of those light showers for us this evening. But what we are watching for tomorrow is this stronger storm system that's over Texas that has been producing numerous severe thunderstorm warnings and even tornado warnings uh, for including the um, Dallas Metroplex. But all this is moving off to the east and it will be here for us tomorrow evening. So again, Friday will be a weather aware day. Isolated storms are expected as we head into the evening hours as that front moves in and the main concern will be the uh, potential threat from damaging and gusty wind in excess from in excess of say 50 or 60 miles per hour as that system does make its way through. Vipercast shows us tomorrow morning starting off the day with temperatures in the 60s. Cloud cover will be with us and as we get to the later part of the day, later afternoon, that's when we'll start to see a couple of showers work their way in and that uh, line will push through, push off the coast as we head into the overnight hours and then Saturday itself will be starting off with a bit of sunshine out there. Temperatures will be warming up pretty nicely even with that front moving through the area. So looking ahead for the next several days, overall that rain chance for our Friday is sitting at 30%. That 20% uh, rain chance for our Saturday is in the very early part of the day, 79 degrees for the high temperature. Lots of sunshine for Sunday, and then some clouds roll back in for Monday ahead of the next system that will move in. That will bring us the chance for some rain Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. That's it for weather. The news continues in a moment. Even if Alec had shown, shown ahead, I Alec still was going to go to prison. It's a lot of debate, a lot of debate here in the middle. I'm trying to hear everybody, and we're already debating back and forth here already. Justin Pember, Sean Kent. There's stuff that'd be said in the break that we're going to slip in here. Some of we can't anymore, though. Um, Justin, you were just talking to me. Nonsense. Uh, well, okay, he might have been doing that too. Alec Murdoch taking the stand. Is that what sunk him? That doomed him with a couple of jurors, right? Because Alec 
Alex is a liar. He's a liar. There, there was not a good explanation that he was going to be able to give that would make it okay to steal from a deaf quadriplegic young man, right? Too many lies, too many lies, too many lies. That blew up in his face. And it doomed him on the financials. So he was going to go to prison either way. I, I really don't know why he testified. Interesting. So on that question, did his lawyers do him a disservice by either A, letting him testify or not doing enough to make sure that he would at least get a hung jury? Justin knows I'm about to say they did him a disservice by letting him give four interviews at the beginning. I've represented people a long time. Rule one, you don't speak. I mean, if it just so happens you go to your property and it just so happens that your wife and son are dead and it just so happens there's nobody else out there, there's nothing you need to talk to law enforcement about until you can figure things out. He's, he made the cardinal sin. In South Carolina, we get discovery. We get all of the evidence. He's giving speeches and telling people and his lawyers on HBO and doing all these things without knowing the evidence against him. It's just a mistake. So it really wasn't his testimony, but his voice that took him down from the interviews? Both. Both. Yeah. Uh, I sorry, sorry, no. no, I think the, the interviews, you know, is, it's the, the repetitive, repetitive lie. You know, I wasn't there, I wasn't there, I wasn't there. And you, you tell law enforcement then, you lock yourself in, your lawyers are there, you know. Um, your lawyer went, did an HBO interview and, and regurgitated the story that his client said and then, bow, enter, thank God. Phone video, yeah. kennels, Bubba. I'm so grateful for Bubba. If the dog didn't grab the chicken, we wouldn't have heard Alex say anything. Yeah. You can't walk that back. You cannot walk it back. And, and Alex's explanation of why he lied was the dumbest. I've lived here my whole life. The dumbest thing a murder I can say is I was afraid of police. You were the law for 100 years. They had, they had barbecues. They had everything at Randolph's house over the years. It made zero sense. And I, I don't know where that theme came from. Yeah, it didn't make much sense on that level because this is a guy who's worked with police the entire time and had his badge. Well, and Justin asked me a question, how do you, because there's two ways to look at it. Um, let's say he doesn't speak to law enforcement. And guess what a good prosecutor does? Your wife and son are dead there and you won't say a word to us. And Justin said, what do you do? As a good lawyer, you get up there and say, I didn't let him speak. I didn't let him talk to law enforcement. He's a lawyer. He knows better. Bla take the lawyer, takes the blame for it. Instead, they had Alec taking the blame for a lot of stuff that the lawyer should have stepped up and taken the blame for. Um, there's some bad trial mistakes. Well, what we want to find out next will be what happens next. What will he actually face when it comes to sentencing? I'm back here with our legal experts who are going to give me their opinions as we move on in the trial of Alec Murdoch and...
Welcome back to the trial of Alec Murdoch Endgame. I'm here with Repres Representative Justin Bamberg. Been a long day. I've been talking a lot. Yes. Speaking of talking a lot, Sean Ken's been talking a lot <laughs> next to me too. So, so I want to get. We've got Alec Murdoch guilty verdict tomorrow is sentencing. What happens in sentencing tomorrow? Do you think what's going to be said? Who's going to take the stand? One, One word. Elwap. Elwap. Judge Newman, I, I think, think will sentence, sentence him to life, life without parole. And he, sent, and he, he, Sean can explain more. This is his arena, but uh, sentences are two purposes: to punish and to deter. And I think that this checks all the boxes of bye bye forever. He's got. So you look at his four charges: he's got two murder charges and two gun charges. The two murder charges carries thirty years to life. Thirty years to life, and then it's a five-year consecutive charge on the gun charges unless the judge writes that four-letter word, L-I-F-E. Bet the farm, Judge Newman has already written L-I-F-E <laughs> on those murder charges. The gun charges don't matter. It's life. Um, if people are trying to do math, that means pine box life in South Carolina, which means they take your butt out in a pine box. He will die in prison. That's the sentence. All this anti -climate. It could have been a death penalty case. Yeah. I mean, it could have been. Just because of the part of the state, they weren't going to kill him, so they didn't waste the money. Yeah. He's getting life. Gentlemen, thank, thank you so much. much. We're going to find out tomorrow officially. Justin Bamberg, Sean Ken, thank you both so much. I'll, we'll get Justin Google while we're gone, too, just in case so we understand. And so we're going to find out about Alec tomorrow morning. 9.30 is that sentencing hearing. Our legal experts have their opinions. We're going to see firsthand exactly what Judge Newman does and what goes on in court tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining us on the trial of Alec Murdoch and Gage.